What is up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the crack a pack series. I hope you all are doing fantastic today. I'm doing very, very well, and I'm very excited to be opening up a pack of the 2015 core set. This was an interesting core set. There were a lot of interesting things going on. I'm pretty sure this is the one where Garrick was just trying to kill everything, so that was pretty fun. Uh, but we are going to go through this as if it is a draft setting, so we'll figure out, hopefully, what a reasonable pack one pick one would be if we were drafting this set. Uh, this is a core set, so do keep in mind that the power level of the cards is probably going to be down a little bit in comparison to other card or other sets, I should say. Uh, and so, if we'd make picks based on that, just be aware that we're not necessarily looking for crazy powerful cards. So there are a few in here. So our first one here is Inferno Fist. It is an enchant creature for one and a red. Uh, the creature gets plus two, plus zero, uh, and then you can pay a red, sacrifice uh, Inferno Fist, and then the Inferno Fist itself deals two damage to target creature or player. I actually kind of like this card, so normally I'm not a huge fan of enchanted creatures, you guys probably know that by now, uh, but being able to leave up a red mana and then uh, shock something seems pretty good. I like being able to do that, so if they use a removal spell, you, you don't really get two for one uh, as if you normally would, as long as you can leave up that one red. So. I kind of like that. It gives you, in a red deck, a place to sink a little bit of mana as well, uh, where you normally kind of don't uh, late game. Uh, a lot of times with the red decks, you kind of fizzle out pretty quickly. Uh, so something like this gives you a little bit more uh, flexibility, which I like as well. So not really a bad card. I don't know how highly I would draft this. I did not draft during this time, so I don't know exactly where things are on that scale, but don't mind this at all. <clears throat> uh, Sungrace Pegasus is a 1-2 for 1 and a white with flying and lifelink. Uh, for 2 mana, that's a lot of keywords actually. Uh, a 1-2 for 2 with flying and lifelink is pretty good. Being able to drop that down early, be able to start swinging in the sky a little bit, gaining a little bit of life back as well, not only is going to keep you alive against red decks and things like that, but keep your aggression and that pressure early game moving forward. Obviously it's only 1 damage per turn, it's not a lot, but you are gaining one in that process as well, and so that life total difference is going to get further and further away, making it not only easier to kill your opponent in the late game, also it's going to make you more difficult to kill in the late game because of that lifelink, and that evasion just makes it easier for this to connect. So I like this card quite a lot. Again, similar to the Inferno Fist, I don't know exactly where to rate this. I feel like these both are not necessarily first pickable, but definitely good cards. Uh, Plummet is an instant for one and a green. Very, very simply destroys target creature with flying. Uh, I absolutely love, love Plummet, actually. Uh, I've found that this is just an absolute blowout for two mana in green. It's a kill spell, which is pretty rare to come by. Obviously, the creature does have to have flying, and not always are you going to run into a creature with flying. So generally, this becomes a sideboard card, but in a core set where flying is kind of at a premium, uh, I feel like it's probably not wrong to main deck maybe one of these. Uh, just being able to outright kill a flyer is ridiculous in a core set. Uh, a lot of people like to go for blue-white flyers or something along those lines, uh, just because the evasion there is really, really good. Uh, for a core set especially, it's very, very good. So being able to kill something just right out is fantastic. I don't think it's higher than any of the other cards. It's much more reactive than proactive, uh, but it is still a powerful card. Uh, Carrion Crow is a 2-2 flyer for two and a black, and it enters the battlefield tapped. Uh, for what little I did draft this set, I found this card to be better than I originally expected. Uh, I expected this to be a total just not great card. Uh, it enters the battlefield tapped, which means it can't block or anything like that right off the bat. However, the downside here is not really that big. Uh, it has summoning sickness anyway, so it's not really going to be able to attack the first turn. It has nothing like that, and it's still a 2-2 flyer for three, which is pretty good, uh, considering that flying is going to make sure it can get in for some damage pretty quickly. So. I actually like this. I'm going to pull out the Sungrace Pegasus just to, for now, just to have a first pick. Uh, I don't think the Carrion Crow beats it, but it is still a good card. Uh, Goblin Rough Rider is a 3 2 for 2 and a red vanilla creature. Very much a filler card for a red deck, but again, this is a core set, so you're going to see a little bit more than that than normal. Uh, a 3 2 for 3 is probably okay at this time. It's not amazing. Uh, but being able to play something on curve is really the important thing, especially in a core set. And so for curve consideration, I would say you could consider this card. Definitely not a first pick by any means, absolutely not a very good card, but it is something that you could play again just to make sure that you're curving out and making sure that you're playing your spells efficiently as best you can. 
A uh, pillar of light is an instant for two and a white. Uh, you exile target creature with toughness four or greater. Uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, I do like this card in particular. Uh, a lot of the time the games go late in a core set because again that power level is a bit lower. Uh, and so you're not going to win the game as fast as you normally would. So cards like this where there's obviously restrictional removal. Uh, but restriction in that you're waiting for the late game and that's most likely what you're going to get to unless you're in just an absolute uh, beating of a red deck wins. And so I actually like this card. I think it's fine. I think I would pick it above anything else at this point. That may be incorrect, but because this is only three mana and instant speed, I actually really like it. So, so far I'm going to go with this and we'll see what else we get. Uh, Ornithopter is a classic card. It's a zero two four zero mana. Uh, and it does have flying. So this is a really interesting one because uh, no, on the face of it, it's very bad, right? It's just a zero two for zero. However, team this with an enchant creature, or even the Inferno Fist or something along those lines, it becomes a real threat real quickly in the early game because you can play it turn one and then maybe follow up with another one mana enchantment or something along those lines. So you start playing multiple spells per turn very, very quickly with an Ornithopter, which costs zero. So I actually like Ornithopter a lot. I don't think it's necessarily better than anything we've seen so far, but uh, there are artifact synergies as well. There's other things in here that would probably be beneficial to have with the Ornithopter. I don't know where to rate this, to be honest. I'm, I'm saying it's not a first pick, but that could be wrong. Uh, Negate is an instant for one and a blue counter target non-creature spell. This is a very straightforward card and one that we see a lot of in a lot of sets. Uh, it's been reprinted numbers of times, like very high number of times actually, but um, tends to be less good in draft, uh, only because a lot of the time you have more creature spells than you do non-creature spells in draft decks. Uh, you're really looking to win on board most of the time. That's, that's not to say you can't win outside of board state presence, but uh, generally speaking, that's the way you're going to win. And so countering a non-creature spell, while definitely a useful ability in some circumstances, is really not as good as being able to counter a creature spell. Uh, and so for me, I'd re much rather have like an essence scatter or something like that that does the exact same thing, just hits creatures instead of non-creatures. So not very high on my list of picks at all. Uh, Rummaging Goblin is a 1-1 one, one for 2 and a red. You can tap it, discard a card, and draw a card. Uh, pretty, I, 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 I want to say classic effect. It kind of is. It's very similar to looting. So if you know what looting is, instead you draw a card, then discard a card. This is discarding a card, then drawing a card. Rummaging is definitely worse. Uh, I tend not to like this card very much. I think it's very bad for, for three mana. You get a 1-1 one, one that only rummages. If it looted, I feel like I would be much more like excited about a pick like this. But in general, the Rummaging Goblin, not my favorite. Uh, Sanctified Charge is an instant for four and a white. Creatures you control get plus two, plus one until the end of the turn. White creatures you control also gain first strike until the end of the turn. This is a very powerful win condition. Uh, if you're in a go wide white deck, especially really any deck, but white especially, uh, you're going to be able to pull this out and hopefully deal a ton of damage very, very quickly. And this is very much the kill spell for a deck like this. Uh, however, I would generally say it'd be better to be in that deck and established in that archetype before you take this, especially because this card is only a common. You're more than likely going to see more than just one of these. Uh, and so being able to pick up the enablers for the deck and then pick up the finisher is much better than picking up the finisher in this regard, because if you don't end up in a go wide strategy, this card is just kind of bad. It's not very good. It's a combat trick, but it's a very expensive one. Uh, and so for that reason, definitely not first pickable, but definitely a good card for that deck in particular. Uh, hot soup is an equipment artifact equipment for one mana of any color. The equipped creature cannot be blocked. Uh, and when it deals damage, uh, destroy it. Or excuse me, when it is dealt damage, destroy it. Uh, and then equip cost of three. You can do that only as a sorcery. Uh, this is an interesting one. I don't know that it's good. I feel like it's probably not, but like being able to get in there for a lot of damage on something is actually pretty good. So there's definitely potential for it. I don't see it on the face. Uh, and so I don't think that this is a card that I would take very early, but if I had a lot of swinging creatures or if I was in like a red deck wins where I could get in for a lot of damage early and I just need to punch through the last few points of damage, maybe I would take it then. 
Uh, but in general, I don't think this is a good first pick. Uh, Paragon of Gathering Miss is a 2-2 two, two for 3 and a blue. Other blue creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. You can also pay a blue and tap it. And another target blue creature you control gains flying until the end of the turn. This is absolutely first pickable material. Uh, a lord of any kind is good. This is a reason to be in blue, of course. Uh, get a blue-white flyers deck or a mainly blue flyers deck, and you're going to be fantastic. This is absolutely the card that you, that you want. If I'm in a blue deck, I want as many of these as possible. So I like this card quite a lot. Definitely good. Being able to give flying to another creature as well is very, very powerful for evasive purposes. Being able to swing in consistently and being able to connect damage is great. So all around fantastic card. Uh, belligerent Sliver. I forgot about Slivers. 2-2 uh, two, two for 2 and a red. Slivers you control have this creature can't be blocked except by 2 or more creatures. So essentially giving them all menace. I don't like this card that much. I think if you're in Slivers it's good. Definitely good. Because we didn't see any other slivers in this deck, though, I would not, or in this pack, excuse me, I would not want to really first pick a sliver because I know that there's none coming around, at least in this pack. That might be incorrect. I tend to shy away from those, like, all in strategies like slivers. Uh, Paragon of the Gathering Mist, you're always going to find some blue cards, so you're probably going to be a little bit more safe picking up that. Whereas Belligerent Sliver is really only good in slivers, so, like, you have to pick them up as soon as you see them. And maybe that's the reason to pick it uh, versus not picking it, but I tend to shy away from that, so this is definitely not my kind of first pick. And then our rare here is Cruel Sadist, so it's a 1-1 one, one for 1 black. Uh, you can pay a black, tap it, and pay a life, uh, and put a 1-1 one, one counter on the Cruel Sadist. And you can pay 2 and a black, tap it, and remove X 1-1 one, one counters uh, from the Cruel Sadist, and it deals X damage to target creature. I find that this gets killed a lot. Uh, and the few times that I did draft this, I actually did get to pick this up once or twice. And while it's a very good ability to be able to stack damage like that and just put 1-1 one, one counters on this, remove them to deal all that damage, that's fantastic. However, it's very easy to also just remove a spell on Cruel Sadist. And it's very slow, so it's going to be difficult to really get this off the ground. Uh, at least in draft, I find it's better to go for a more aggressive strategy. And so for me, that's not a very good pick. Uh, we did not get a foil, so for me, it's a very easy Paragon of Gathering Miss. I think that's clearly the best card in this pack. Uh, Belligerent Sliver, also very good if you're going for Slivers, but again, I'm going to shy away from that. Feel free in the comment section to disagree with my draft picks. By all means, I'm happy to have that conversation, but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below, and as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content, but with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack a Pack episode.